Welcome to Sandbox FOMO 5 from Bureau Happold. Each week we pick short snippets from our most recent episode for your listening pleasure. These quick listens could be valuable insights, thought-provoking elements, or even practical advice that will no doubt enrich your life and knowledge. Sandbox brings together curious individuals interested in a specific topic to discuss, dissect and interrogate it. The style is conversational, with experts from Bureau Happold and invited external guests who will add another angle to the narrative. Listeners are encouraged to gather around our podcast so that we can explore the latest advances in various fields and expand our collective horizons. Sometimes we'll tackle a subject head-on, sometimes a sideways view, but always with curiosity, expertise and who knows, maybe even a dash of humour. We've been talking a bit before recording about the biodiversity net gain, the biodiversity crisis. Can you tell us a little bit about what is biodiversity net gain and what's the big deal, basically? It's really important to care because we're on the brink of a mass extinction event with regards to nature. So we've got 70% of nature in global decline. So that applies to the rural areas, but also in, in cities as well. And that matters because it's inherently linked with wildlife is inherently of, of value for sort of cultural reasons. Obviously, we have our kind of link with it for emotional reasons as well and, and reasons of mental health. But it's also of value inherently, intrinsically, as, as, as much as anything else. At the same time, we've seen a parallel increase in global temperatures. And there's some really interesting data to show how that our climate emergency is is completely linked with our sort of nature depletion emergency. Those two things are linked and they have a circular effect on one another. So that's why we should care, because we have to. We depend on nature for ecosystem services as well. So the provision of those services is something that's only in the last 20 years come out and we're starting to be able to value that in financial terms. And then to your second question, so biodiversity net gain is a new showcase policy applies to England only. And it's brilliant, I think, on a personal level. Historically, the UK, have we've always had wildlife protection law since the late 70s, early 80s. But what's clear is that hasn't really done enough to protect biodiversity in cities or elsewhere. So the UK is actually one of the world's most nature depleted countries. That's to do with our population level, our historical development and our small land area as well. So we've exploited the natural world in a real way. And that's very clear when it's looked looked at in a sort of global metric sense. Thankfully, the new biodiversity net gain policy is all about leaving nature in a measurably better state than it was before. So the difference between what we were doing prior to this policy, which would rely purely on the professional judgment of ecologists, essentially, is to work out how much mitigation should go in. Now, our new take on that is that we need to assess a site and it is then assigned a numerical value based on lots of different parameters. You then look at what a development is going to provide in terms of biodiversity, which again is assigned a numerical parameter. And then you compare the two and the policy requires developers to leave nature in a 10% better state than it was before. It's a really exciting policy and lots of other countries around the world are trying to follow suit and do something similar because it sort of allows a very measurable way of looking at biodiversity compared to previously. Thank you very much. And so obviously the advantages of biodiversity uh, almost speak for themselves from an ecological point of view, don't they? The more creatures we have, the better the environment, the better the environment, the more creatures we have. It's a virtuous symbiotic circle. Colin, do the advantages of biodiversity net gain stop at the ecological? No, definitely not. They extend to much further reach than that. And there's some really interesting data around the study of that, some stuff we've worked on with C40 cities. I would say mainly as well, think about the environment you want to live in. Like when you go outside, you want to see an environment which is nice to live in. It has a huge mental impact on us as individuals as we go outside of our house i think covid taught us that the environment is really important around where you live but also where you work as well and being able to go outside and and engage in nature has a strong mental health benefit there are also huge physical benefits human benefits as well around engaging and being next to nature so air quality improves around green infrastructure well i hope you enjoyed that quick dip into our last episode of sandbox Don't forget to subscribe to follow the show. You'll find Sandbox in all the usual places, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Bureau Happold's YouTube channel, and on the Bureau Happold website. What's more, if you want to join the conversation on X, known as Twitter to his old friends, use the hashtag BHSandbox, 
We'd love to hear from you on any of the topics discussed.